All right, so today we're going to be starting a new series on the STM32F microcontroller family, specifically on the black, uh, black pill, sorry. Uh, this is the STM32F 411CU6. I don't know if that's visible, but uh, yeah, this is what we're working with. And this is basically a blue pill, just a bit more expensive and runs a bit faster and has a bit more memory. It, it's more better and it has a type C on the board. So yeah, why not? Uh, board itself is around six, seven dollars. Uh, debugger, these are all fake, uh, about three, four dollars, thereabouts. I recommend these over the original v3 control uh, debugger i got one of those and the ide actually crashes every time so you have to run the flashing twice it's it's quite a bit of a hassle anyway so we'll be using a mac with stm cube with the stm cube ide all right so first step will be to create a new project and we're going to be doing an stm32 project in this case I'm going to let it download all its files. This will run fantastically once STM goes ba ST goes bankrupt. But anyway, for the time being, this works. So let's all rejoice. Here, STM32F411CU6. And which one is it? Okay, so it's this one. All right, we're gonna hit next. Uh, test bench. Hello, world. Do not select C plus plus. This doesn't really work. Uh, there is a way to run C plus plus code and flash it to the STM processors, but it's totally different from what this offers. We're gonna go STM cube. Whatever. This is fine. Uh, I don't know, this looks fine, finish. All right, so we'll be setting the pins first. Uh, PC13 is the LED on board, the blue LED, so we're gonna hit that and select output. Uh, next up, let's hit system core and go for um, clock, actually, I wanna go for. So enable the crystal ceramic resonator. So this will enable us to go to the full speed that this can run at. So it puts these in and yeah, I guess the low speed clock we can leave out and it should be fine. All right, so on the clock config page, we're gonna hit this mux and select HSE. And then we're gonna hit PLL clock over here and divide by two over here and it still wants a slower clock here so we're gonna go divide by two and this oh should be fine is it no does it want to divide by four over here yeah so it doesn't really matter what you select here as long as it's not red so as long as it's allowable you can run at those speeds uh, this would be a picture of a maximal setup, kind of, so as fast as you can push it. I've left it in my video at 37.5 instead of 100, so it runs way slower. The only benefit this has is it uses less power, basically. But otherwise, everything will work just fine, especially for simple examples like the Hello World we're doing here. Anyway, feel free to use the thing I've... Um, this maximal setup if you want to go as fast as possible otherwise it really doesn't matter yeah so this is fine uh, just click the name over here and hit command s and this will save everything uh, this will generate code to basically match whatever you've uh, set up here in the GUI I think for the time being we should be fine, right? With the GPIO looking like it it does, right? So we have the clock and we have the output. I think this should be fine. So we're gonna go to the main.c and over here you'll see there's a lot of points where you can input code, right? So whatever you write in here will not get modified. Whatever you write outside of these will get modified, will get deleted every time you save the IOC basically. 
So let's just go test one and test zero. And so we're gonna save this and then modify something in the IOC. I don't know what we can modify. Whatever, just hit Command S. This will regenerate the code and you will see that these will get eaten up, right? So this will survive. This has died. So make sure to only write code in the sections marked by user code, right? You'll always get them throughout, right? After basically every bit that is generated, you will get a bit where you can overwrite your own stuff if you so please. And so basically we can go into the while one. This would be the loop from uh, Arduino. Okay, so over here, we're gonna write a simple routine that will just toggle the LED on and off. So turn LED on would be hall. So hardware abstraction layer, general purpose IO. And I think it's right pin to be honest. Right pin, that is correct. GPIO C. You can see that all these pins are grouped into banks. So in this case, 13 is called PC13, right? So port C13. And for example, zero is PA0, three is PB3. And if you wanna consult what all the pins, uh, what ports all the pins map out to, you can find a plethora of these pinouts nicely drawn out on the internet. So usually they match, right? So A4 is PA4, pin 14, and they tell you what all the features are on each pin. So that's that's pretty nice. Anyway, so GPIO C, GPIO pin 13, and one. To set the pin, how delay works exactly as the delay does on Arduino. So we're gonna put, I don't know, 2000 milliseconds and then we're going to do the same thing to turn the LED off so turn LED off and go zero and let's have a shorter delay over here of 1000 and I think this should be it and uh, let's connect the debugger so yeah basically this should all mostly work So it's going to ask us some uh, some stuff about the debugger. We're going to go with why oh, I think this is fine. Yeah, just just leave this as is. Should all be fine. And let's see if it works. And that seems that it has. Let's quickly modify it. See if we're on the money. So let's hit play again, which is basically the build button and flash. Yeah, so that's about it. In my next video, we're going to look at setting up an encoder and I'll show you the project I'm working on and we're going to go from there. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and as always, have a good one.